Well, it's been discovered. I am part of the problem. Welcome to the Free Thought Frontier. I appreciate you taking time to watch the video, and I'm Bill Stone. Well, I've been called out both on one of my videos and other places. They called me out, and you can see specifically in my last video, there's a link to it in the description box below. And in general, the argument was, YouTube is a form of social media. By engaging in YouTube, am I not contributing to the information-seeking loop that I previously discussed? Well, the short answer is, yes, I am contributing to it. The long answer is a lot more complex, so let's see if we can break it down. One of, one of my viewers broke it down pretty well, so I'm just going to read their comment here, as was written. Quote, Elon may own X, but he's not responsible for social media nor its impact on society. For you to demonize him as you have actually makes you no different than the internet trolls um, that make social media into the nightmare that it was destined to become. If this response helps you promote the slop you're posting, then so be it. But your video came in my, up in my YouTube feed without any other platform's influence. And just to reiterate something that's already been posted, YouTube is social media. Maybe you're not getting traffic because of the quality of your content. Well, to break this kind of down point by point, no, Elon is responsible for social media. He owns what has become the monolithic source for all human converse worldwide. If he's not responsible for it, who the hell is? Human discourse has in fact become extremely monolithic, solely centered around Twitter. Well, that's bad, okay? And Elon knows that he owns it. He has just shown us that he knows about all this by telling Bob Iger to go F himself and watching the repercussions, of which there apparently have been some. This is not, by the way, what those of us who commercialized the internet intended. We never intended anything to be monolithic and all human discourse to center solely around one thing. But Elon is a certifiable genius. He actually is. So he can't not know this. He knows. And he's got responsibility for the platform that he owns. So by de facto, he has some responsibility for what it does to society. It is why, by the way, he is trying to crush the woke. He describes it as a virus. I describe it simply as a fascist movement that is evil and attempting to criminalize and control your very thoughts. Now, I neither demonize nor champion Elon Musk. I am, however, disturbed by the cult of personality that's grown up around him because he is not a savior. He is not the real life Tony Stark, which is how he began the cult of personality by cultivating this idea that he is the real Tony Stark. That's not possible. Tony Stark is a fictional character and Elon Musk is not. Elon is not a runaway success. In fact, he has far more failures to his name than successes. The problem is that he's so good at publishing, publicizing his ideas that people tend to forget the prior failures and look forward to the next ones. Some of his failures include the Hyperloop. And I'm not the first one to point out scientifically that this is an impossibility. In fact, there's a scientist on YouTube who works with vacuum chambers who has explicitly called out Elon, proving that the Hyperloop was a scientifically ludicrous idea and it was doomed to failure. That username is Thunderfoot with two zeros, and he has an entire series on the subject. There's a link below in my description box. Another thing that Elon predicted that has never come to pass and won't anytime soon is colonies on Mars by 2023. Putting colonies on Mars isn't easy. It involves numerous sciences that we don't know anything about. For example, there's the spacecraft itself. It would need to generate simulated gravity by spinning some section of it to use centrifugal force as simulated gravity. Now, this is really cool in science fiction. It really is. But we've never even attempted it in reality. Everything about it is totally theoretical. And doing it for real involves engineering that we've simply never attempted. It's possible in theory, but it may take decades to actually do it 
And that's just an orbit, not to mention a spacecraft. The spacecraft would also be able to need to be able to endure the deadly radiation produced by the sun. On Earth, we have a nice blanket of atmosphere that screens it out, but there's none in space on a spacecraft. Exactly how that would work to screen out all of this radiation is totally theoretical at this point. Colonies on Mars couldn't exist as domes on the surface for the same reason. The Mars atmosphere is thin, largely carbon dioxide, and there's nothing to stop the radiation. Any domes would need to be made of lead, which the astronauts would have to bring with them at considerable expense because getting mass like lead out of Earth's orbit is going to expend a lot of rocket power. Or, more likely, colonies on Mars would be burrowed underground and excavated like mines. We don't know that humans, livestock, or crops can grow or even be conceived in Mars's low gravity, which is about one-third the gravity of Earth. We don't know that we can drink the water in Mars poles. For all we know, it could contain deadly toxins that would need to be filtered out. We just don't know. And these are only a few things that we don't know. The list is practically endless. The bottom line, humans will not be going to Mars anytime soon. Unlike Elon's claims, putting colony on Mars isn't easy. That's why he missed his colonies on Mars by 2023 deadline. You'll pardon me, I shoot everything about my videos in one take. So occasionally I get dry mouth. Another one of Elon's failures is Tesla. It is an abject failure. The vehicles are far too expensive to be commercially viable and they always will be. They are utterly useless in over 99% of the geographical US. Now as a personal example, after our divorce, my ex took the kids and moved to Chicago. Because of the child support obligations, it was economically and mathematically impossible for me to both afford the cost of living in Chicagoland and making my child support payments. Now I, got a, I moved as close as I could to a metro area that I could actually afford and the notion that if I lost a job there, I could probably get another. And that was Des Moines, Iowa. With a gas powered vehicle, the drive from Des Moines to Chicago is about five hours, including refueling time. With an electric vehicle, the drive would have increased to 11 hours due to charging time alone. Now I made that trip two to four times a week, sometimes every single weekend. With a 10 hour travel time, it was barely doable to leave work on Friday after five o'clock and then get home late on Sunday, sometime between 10 and midnight. It would have been impossible with an electric vehicle. I would have been an absent father to my children. And don't even get me started on just how stupid the Cybertruck is. If Elon really wanted to get the US off fossil fuels, he'd be building nuclear reactors. They are the cheapest, safest, most output efficient sources of power known to man. If you put 10 of them in Wyoming, you could shut down all fossil fuel reactors completely. Elon is pushing his company not environmental concerns, which is why he's not pushing nuclear. He never even discusses it. I had another user who suggested that Elon is giving us back our freedoms by owning us. He is not giving us back our freedoms. Our freedoms exist because we are sapient individuals. We have them without anyone's permission. They cannot be taken away. Censored, yes, but not taken away. And while YouTube does censor, I'm still able to communicate my ideas. They're just not generally promoted by YouTube's algorithms. The reason, uh, this answering my viewer who talked about it, my last video was promoted was because it was anti-Elon. And oh, do tech giants hate Elon. They will promote anti-Elon videos. They will not promote my videos of other things. Elon Musk is a billionaire with a billionaire's concerns. He can no more understand Joe Average than any other billionaire. And I guarantee that the tripling and doubling of my or go grocery bill isn't something that he's aware of. He gets his food, I'm sure he eats really well, and the cost is irrelevant. Elon needs to be treated the same as any other billionaire with a certain level of suspicion. Everything he says should be questioned. He is a success with SpaceX, and by God, that needs to be commended. But everything else he's done, at least the big stuff, is a failure or doomed to failure. Elon Musk isn't who he represents himself to be. Now, as to me being part of the problem, 
Yes, YouTube is a social media. However, it's got some benefits because it's a social media that's not limited to a few characters. You can make comments as long as you want. You can make videos as long as you want. The character limitation on X is part of the problem. You can't communicate a complex thought in only a few characters. And this invites all kinds of division. It has created all kinds of division. Now, as to what I do, this paradoxical nature of being involved in what is the problem. Partly it's my father. My father and I used to talk politics all the time. When we got together for family uh, visits like Christmas and you know uh, Thanksgiving, stuff like that, he and I would start politi talking politics and we would talk hours and hours and hours and hours and I like to think that the input that I got from him was useful after he's died. He's been dead about 10 years, something like that now. He and I would talk politics so much that our family members would just take a look at it and go, oh, God, not again, and just walk off and leave us alone. Now he's gone. And if I don't talk about this to someone, I will go insane. He's really the only person I could talk about to. And since he's not there, <laughs> tag, you're it. I also like to think that I'm presenting different ideas. What I really want to concentrate more than anything else on this show is applications, real world applications of what I call what is called the zero aggression principle in libertarian circles. It's also called the non-aggression principle, but uh, I like zero aggression principle because it creates an acronym that feels like you're doing something, the zap. Otherwise you're talking about the nap, which seems like you're just laying there. So I prefer the zap. And the ZAP is a very simple philosophy that states no human being has the right under any circumstances to initiate force against another human being nor to threaten or delegate its initiation. The shorthand version of that is don't start nothing, won't be nothing. I also like to think that I'm promoting some level of independent thought. You're not going to see the same thing here that you see on a lot of other videos. Who else? What other video on YouTube exists that talks about the information seeking loop? I am totally unaware that anyone has ever talked about this. I also, despite what it looks like at various times, pretty much equally disagree with the right, the left, and even other libertarians. But uh, I'm not a member of the Libertarian Party. That is a subject for a whole other video. But trust me, all sides, I find myself at odds with them all the time. What I try to do is push something that they are not. Now, by posting these videos, am I contributing to the information seeking loop? Yes. Yes, I am. I know I am. And I know it's contradictory. It's just that I think that what I'm doing is different and it's better. And if I don't discuss this stuff, I'm going to go insane. I can't discuss it on social media. It is pointless. It just contributes to the hostility. And I become the subject of targeted online bullying. This has happened more than once. Specifically, it happened one time very, very memorably when actor LeVar Burton poured his woke hate mob on me. I've discussed that in another video. Uh, it came up during a live stream. I'll take a link to the live stream, but it probably warrants another video all on its own at this point. Now, as to my not getting views due to poor content, well, probably some truth to that. My prior content, by the way, was almost exclusively live streams in excess of two hours, which meant that it wasn't that approachable as after the fact. Now I'm doing videos that should be hopefully less than 20 minutes long, preferably closer to 8 to 12. I will do what monthly live streams, however. It's just that I can't do them every week and have it be solely my content. Specifically, the reason that I'm not going to do it, one of the many reasons, there's a few, is due to my health. I am an early Gen X, born the first year of Gen X in 1965, and I'm now old enough that the lower back arthritis that I have means I can't sit still for long periods of time in front of a camera. Now I'm getting things like, uh, you know, physical therapy for it and that's helping, but I'm still not going to be able to sit for three to three and a half hours in front of a video all 
night long. That just isn't happening. I may do it on special occasions. I might decide I want to cover an election. Um, but you can expect when that happens that I will take significant breaks. I am, however, breaking my content up. To start with, there is the show you're watching, Free Thought Frontier, and that will be limited primarily to politics, sociology, and stuff like that that tends to interest me, and specifically the zero aggression principle. I'm also starting another show that I haven't started yet called, called Timeless Odyssey, exploring sci-fi through the ages. This will focus on various types of reviews of science fiction going back as much as 100 years or more. I probably won't be doing science fiction that's modern other than indie films and stuff like that. I'll explain that more in a different video. All of these will be brand. I'll also be doing the Late Late Star Date. This will be my uh, monthly um, live stream. And that's going to be kind of a free-for-all, be whatever I want to talk about, whatever my viewers want to talk about, throw things at me, etc. All of these will be branded under Tales from SYL Ranch as different programs with different content. And I'm going to do a video, a standalone video, that's going to explain exactly all what I'm changing and why. Now, as to my con content, I am always open to suggestions. And if you have any, leave them as a comment. I might even take them into uh, consideration. For example, my lower third that you see below me, it used to be larger. It used to have a scroll going across, right? Things that I thought were interesting would scroll across the screen. But I had enough viewers tell me that that was actually distracting from what I'm saying. I thought about it and I went, yeah, that makes sense. So I took it out. I will take, you know, suggestions and constructive criticism if it seems like it makes sense to me. So feel free if you think I should be talking. If you, want, if you want to see me talk about something that I'm not talking about, let me know. I'm happy to talk about it. So I hope that kind of explains um, some of what I do. Uh, I hope that you like this kind of content. If you do, I urge you to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell, and leave lots of comments on my videos, because I do not engage in social media. I use it solely to publicize my videos. Please, you can share me on social media if you absolutely cannot stop yourself from doing it. But you shouldn't be on social media. It's bad for you personally, it's bad for society, and it's bad for the civilized discourse of the entire world. If you want to share me, I suggest maybe you do it the same way that was always done in the past, by telling people in person. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time on the Free Thought Frontier. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.